Hey guys, John here from Fly8MikeAlpha.com and today I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at our Tailwheel Pilot Flying Course. And we're going to go over two key tools, not just for Tailwheel airplanes, but this applies to any airplane really. First of all, how to use your flaps to pop off the ground when you need to get off the ground a little bit quicker, and also how to control the amount of drag on your airplane so when you need to drop in like a rock on down to the runway, you'll be able to do so. So what sorts of tools do we have to lose altitude? Well, obviously you can reduce power. But say you don't want to reduce power either because the power is all the way back and the airplane won't come down anymore and you're still too high. Or maybe you just don't want to shock cool the engine. So you want to keep a little bit of power in there. Maybe the engine kind of runs a little rough down in that, you know, 800 or 1,000 RPM range. So you want to keep the RPM spooled up a little bit. It kind of coughs every time you add power in. So if you want to make the airplane come down, well, we've got flap. So we're well within the flap range. We could go ahead and just go all the way to full flap. That'll make the airplane want to come down, right? Increases drag a little bit. What other tools do we have? Well, we also have the slip. And in older tailwheel airplanes, some of them don't have flaps. So if you wind up high, all you can really do is reduce power. And then once you get the power all the way back, all you're left with is the slip. Now, the slip, pretty easy, really. You should know it from your private pilot days. All you have to do is simply apply, say, right rudder and left aileron. So it's simply opposite controls. And that makes you feel like you're going to the side here. As so I'm pushing right rudder and left aileron with the ball flies out to the left, we can feel that centrifugal force going out to the left. But we're also presenting the side of the aircraft as a big drag net, basically. We're flying the airplane crooked through the air. So instead of streamlined airflow, now the air is hitting the side of the airplane and that big side of the fuselage, especially the big fuselage on like a Piper Cub or an Aronka Champ, really creates a lot of drag and will make the airplane sink a whole lot faster. Now, how much of a slip can you do? Well, you can go full rudder to the floor and full aileron if it takes it. You can even make turns when you're doing this, okay? So if you want to turn from, say, base to final in a slip, that's totally fine. You can simply just increase the aileron, which increases the the horizontal component of lift. The rudder is fighting the horizontal component of lift, but if you bank the airplane more, you have more horizontal component of lift, the airplane will turn. And then to stop the turn, you simply shallow the bank. So you're still flying the airplane as you normally do. You're just keeping one rudder kind of plugged to the floor more than the other. You could do it the opposite direction. Now, how do you decide which rudder you want to press on? Well, if there's any sort of crosswind, I always try to make the airplane straighten up with the runway so that when I get down there, I don't have much correction to make. I'm not, you know, say if there's a left crosswind and the airplane's pointed off to the left, I'll go ahead and use some right rudder and use a slip with the right rudder and left aileron because that's already set me up for the landing. Now, if it's uh, totally wind calm, then I simply just apply rudder in the direction that gives me a better view of the runway or a better view of the airport environment if I'm trying to avoid other traffic. And that's really all there is to it. It's a very simple maneuver. You should get comfortable with it at altitude first, and then try it on your landings on your as you're on final and you try to come down, especially when you're doing the simulated power off landing, so simulated engine failures with your instructor. You can go ahead and use that slip, come in high, so you know you're going to make it, and then slip at the last little bit. You can use the slip all the way down to the ground if you want, although it's recommended you try to kick it out at 50 or 100 or 250 feet, whatever your personal minimums are, whatever you're comfortable with. But of course, if you need to use the slip all the way down to the ground, say you're engine out and you're landing in a field, it's very short, and it's all you got, then you can go ahead and use it. We'll go ahead and demonstrate it here for you. Venice traffic, Cessna 40 November, left base, runway 23, Venice traffic. So we're pretty high, we're at 600 feet, we're on a left base, and we're coming in right abeam the, the uh, threshold. So we're really uh, not giving ourselves any sort of final to fly. The final is going to be all runway and pavement in front of us. So I'm going to go ahead and pull carburetor heat on, reduce our engine RPM, throttle on back here. we got about 60 miles per hour. So I'll go ahead and trim to help me with that. Trim nose up, go to full flap. And remember what we said here, right? So we're gonna slip all the way down. We can slip in the turn. And also the slips are a lot more effective if you do them slowly because you're giving the airplane more time to cover that ground, so more time to sink. So say you're sinking at 500 feet a minute. Well, if you sink for a minute, that's 500 feet. If you sink for 30 seconds, that's only going to be 250 feet. So you're gonna want to let the airplane slow down and sink as long as possible to get you down. Speeding up in a slip is not your friend. You're not doing anything to help yourself. Looks like we have a little bit of a uh, right cross one there. So we'll go ahead and keep our right wing down, keep that slip in there. Now, you don't wanna get so slow that you stall because stalling cross control is kind of bad, but we're gonna go ahead, try to kick that slip out now. Now we're just holding the airplane off. We're gonna do a nice little three point landing here. Holding the airplane off and there we are. There's all three wheels at once. Rolling all the way over to the right for that crosswind. Carburetor heat's off. And a little power in. We're going to go ahead and get rid of those flaps. And now I'm going to show you guys how to pop off the ground a little sooner using the flaps. So we're going to go ahead and start this crosswind takeoff here, pinning the tail to the ground. We add in full power. We're looking down that runway. We go ahead and start taking some control pressure out, letting the nose lower, letting the tail come up. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull in full flap. And that helps pull me off the runway. 
Now, that's really helpful to use when you're on a soft field or if you're on any sort of a uh, rough strip where you're trying to get off the ground as soon as possible, any sort of short field, you can always pull flaps in at the last second. Now, why don't we just start the takeoff roll with flaps? Because they're additional drag right from the get-go. So we're trying to minimize the drag. That's why we let the tail come up. So we lower the drag because we don't have all the drag from the wing. The tail generates a lot less drag raising than the wing does cruising along that high angle of attack with the tail low down the runway. So now we're at a safe altitude, we can start reducing these flaps. But the idea there is to accelerate with the minimum amount of drag possible and then just kind of pop the airplane off the ground by increasing as much lift all as possible. So right as you pull the flaps in, you're also rotating, you're also lowering the tail back down, increasing the lift on the wing and the airplane pops right off the ground. And then you can accelerate either in ground effect, if you did that really slow and you're below VX, you're below your flying speed, you could accelerate in ground effect. Or for us, we were already above VX, we just climbed out right at VX and we didn't really have any obstacles or anything like that to worry about. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to become a better pilot, then fly tailwheel airplanes. It is that simple. When you start flying tailwheel airplanes, they force you to become a better pilot. And before you go do that, to get started, you'll definitely want to check out the tailwheel pilot course online at flatmikealf.com. If you like this video and all of our other videos, you'll definitely like that online course there. Check out the tailwheel flying course, everything you need to know about takeoffs, landings, crosswind landings, three pointers, wheel landings. Everything is included in the course online there. Be sure to check it out. And remember, guys, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We will see you all next time.